the Avro 679 Manchester was a complete failure. In total, only two prototypes and 200 production aircraft were built before it was, quite rightly, abandoned. The poor performance of the Manchester caused one squadron to, only half-jokingly, plan their squadron reunion in a German POW camp. Their scorn was well-deserved. It was a terrible aircraft. But its story should not be forgotten, nor the importance it had in forming arguably the most profound legend in the milieu of strategic bombing in World War II. So what was the Manchester's problem? If it was so bad, how did it form such a legend? Well, let's look at how this failure of a bomber did indeed become the stuff of legend. To describe the Manchester is to describe a very modern, well-designed, contemporary aircraft of its time. It was strong and sleek, using internal aluminium alloy ribs, over which an external skin of aluminium was flush riveted. Its wings featured two spars, ribbed with aluminium alloy, housing self-sealing fuel tanks. The pilot was afforded additional armor and a bulletproof glass canopy that gave great all-round vision for him and his flight controller. For crew comfort, a rest area was situated just to the rear of the main cabin. It had hydraulic systems that powered three turrets located in the nose, rear, and mid-upper fuselage. Hydraulics also managed the aircraft's undercarriage and bomb bay doors, the latter also sporting air backup systems and safety measures to prevent the bombs dropping if the doors were closed. Its bomb bay that covered nearly two-thirds of the underside of its fuselage held an impressive bomb load of 10,350 pounds. In fact, to look at a Manchester, apart from the shorter wingspan and having two not four engines, one might think you were looking at a Lancaster. Alas, therein lies the rub for the Manchester. Its two Rolls-Royce Vulture engines were complete lemons. Not that the Manchester's systems were all great to begin with, but the Avro engineers were praised as being excellent in doing modifications and re-equipping the aeroplane to overcome shortcomings as they arose. But the Rolls-Royce Vulture engines were, quite literally and figuratively, letting the aircraft down. Originally designed to produce around 1,750 horsepower, continuing problems with the Vulture design meant that the engines were derated to around 1,450 horsepower in service by limiting the maximum running speed. Imagine ending up with two extremely unreliable 1,450 horsepower engines trying to haul a 50,000-pound aircraft. There was no redundancy. Should you lose one engine to enemy fire or malfunction, the Manchester was going down. The Manchester's first operational mission was conducted on the 24th of February 1941 in a raid on the French port of Brest. Mere months later, on the 13th of April 1941, all Manchesters were temporarily grounded due to a higher-than-expected number of engine-bearing failures. Then again on the 16th of June 1941, a second grounding of the Manchester was ordered due to more engine troubles. By now, the Manchester's fate seemed sealed. Pending orders for 150 Manchesters placed with ferry to be built at Ringway were cancelled, along with 200 units placed with Metropolitan Vickers at Trafford Park and 150 units placed with Armstrong Whitworth. But the plucky engineers at Avro were proving their reputation for proactive engagement. For as early as the 9th of January 1941, a full month before the Manchester became operational, the Mark III Manchester took flight. This version dumped the Vulture engines and featured a longer wing, fitted with four Rolls-Royce Merlins engines originally developed for the Bowfighter II. This Mark III Manchester was renamed the Lancaster, and thus the legend we all know and love was born.
But of course the Mark I and II Manchester remained. The 193 remaining operational aircraft flew 1,269 sorties with Bomber Command, dropping 1,826 tons of bombs over occupied territory. Of those 193 Manchesters, 78 were lost in action, and 45 were non-operational losses, of which 30 involved engine failure. They flew their last operation against Bremen on June 25, 1942. It is unsurprising but somewhat ironic that the Manchester's final role in Royal Air Force service was as instructional trainers for Lancaster bomber crews. So there we have it. Why the Manchester was one of the best failures to take to the sky. And as we consider the failure it was, there is an opportunity for us all to reflect on the dedication of airmen like Flying Officer Leslie Manser, who was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions while piloting Manchester L7-301 of 50 Squadron during the Cologne bombing mission. These brave men knew the shortcomings of the Manchester but steadfastly and stoically flew missions into enemy territory. We are forever grateful.